Hello, Lava friends. Today we talk about PHP attributes, what they are, why we love them here at Lava, and how they can be helpful to you too. Let me show you. So what are PHP attributes? Here's an example from Lava's documentation about global scopes, where we have defined a global scope here through a PHP attribute. So this is what they look like. It's a class, so this is the attribute class's name, scope by, and then we have the ability to add here parameters as well. And it's a kind of machine readable way to add metadata to your classes in this case, but you can also add scopes to a method or to a function, so this also works. And then in our code, we have the ability with reflection to check, okay, if this class is using any attributes, like in this example, any scopes, any global scopes, then we check this through reflection in PHP and yeah, add those global scopes and this would work then. So this is how they work and how we are using them in level. I'm going to show you a few examples here. Let's also start with global scopes here. So here in my user model, I have already added a global scope in a different way we can do this in level, how we did it before we had PHP attributes by using the booted method and adding the global scope, scope here like this. If we check this out and run this now in Tinkerwell, um, you can see we get here some results. I don't have any users, but you can see here in the query that we are already checking here if the user is active, if active is one. And this is exactly what this scope here does. You can see this is being applied. All right, let's get rid of this. We should see here now that this is not being applied here anymore. No, it's not. So let's bring this back, but now use a PHP attribute. All right. Scope by with auto completion here, which is perfect. And then we provide an array with our global scopes. And this one is called active scope. And we're providing here in this case the class name. All right, let's run this again. You can see back we have our global scope applied. We're only getting the users which are active. So this is a nice way to yeah, define global scopes in level and use PHP attributes. And what I really like about this example here that when we go to our user model, we see immediately that we have a global scope here applied, which I think is very crucial to know here right at the top of our class. And yeah, also later we will get rid of the booted method at all, which is also nice. So this is a nice example. And yeah, this is already the second example here. We are using a user observer here for this user mod. So let's see what we're doing here. When we have a new user created, we are dispatching our custom user created event. And this also we have defined through the booted method and yeah, calling this static observe method here. But yeah, we can also get rid of this and let's also add this here directly to our user. So let's do this. This now is called observe by and now we're providing the name of our observer, which is our user observer class. All right, let's try this out. Let's see if this is still working. Okay, no issue here. So this seems working as well. Now we have our global scope and the user observer here defined directly on the top of our class, which I really like and think is a very clean and nice way to do this. And again, we also got rid of our booted method, which we don't need anymore. So I really believe this is now a cleaner way. Of course, the old way is still working, so you can decide for yourself which you prefer. And to be clear, both of them here also work by using an array or by just providing a single class. Okay, what else do we have? We have another example here. We are creating here a new custom collection that we want to use. So you can do this in level and define this new collection method inside your model, inside this user model, for example. And then we can define a new custom collection, which should be returned when we use eloquent for getting some data. Okay, let's try this out as well. Let's get rid of the SQL. And we already see this here when I try to get all the users. I don't have any users. But now what's being returned is not the default collection, it's this is now our custom user collection, which has all the features of a default collection. But yeah, we can add some specific methods to our custom collection that might be useful to our user. And we define this here inside our user model by using this collection method. And yeah, we can also get rid of this and define this now with a new PHP attribute. So let's add a new one here, which is called collected by. And now we provide our custom user collection class. And if we try this out, you can see this is still working, still providing our custom collection when we get the results back from Eloquent. 
So we have now um, added here three PHP attributes. I think that's, again, really a clean and useful way in order to do this and use this inside a user model. We got rid of the booted method, we got rid of the new collection method, and yeah, I really like how this looks. Okay, another example that I've already shown also in one of the What's New videos is about contextual attributes. So let me show you what those are. Here, I think, here down we have a better example. Yeah, here, here we have a lot of them. So when you, when you get some services from the service container, you often have to bind a specific implementation to the container and then you can get it out of the container. This is a way where you don't have to define and bind this directly to the container, but you can define this here directly when defining what dependency you want. So here, for example, we want to use a guard and we want to make sure that it is for web. Or when we get something like the cache repository, we want to make sure this is the one for Redis. Or here we want to get something from our config, which is the time zone, which we get then here as a string, and we can define this here as well. So this is really useful when you need something to the container, but you don't want to bind this manually. This is now a new way we can do this by using PHP attributes yeah, in front of the types that you define here. Let me give you some other examples for this. So inside my update user controller, I'm using here a form request. So we get here the user and we want to update, or we're going to update this user. And here inside this form request, what we're doing here is we are checking if we're allowed to authorize this, this call and want to make sure that the user, which we want to update, has the same idea as the authenticated user. And this works like this, we get the user from, which is um, binded to our route through route model binding. And we have this route helper here to get this user from our route. And then of course we have our auth helper to get the ID of our currently authenticated user. But now there's a different way we can do this by dependency injection. So let me show you. First we get our user, our currently authenticated user by current user. So we define first the attribute and then the type, which is user just to make sure that we get what we expect. And now we have a second one, which is called route parameter. And here we define which parameter we want. And in our case, it's the parameter called user, which is also a user object. And maybe let's call this to rename, rename this to authenticated user. And this is the user to update. Yeah, I think that's better. And now we can get, get rid of this and make sure that our Authenticated user, the ID is the same as our user to update. All right, I also have a test for this. Let's make sure that this is still working. Let's run this. No, it's failing. Let's see what we did wrong here. Must be of type app model user. Okay, it seems we have done this wrong. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's just user. So let's go back to our test. I think now it should be passing as yes, it does. All right. So now this is an example for using those contextual attributes in Laravel, which are being defined by PHP attribute. And as you've seen, there are much more, but I really think that they are really useful. So it's very clear here through dependency injection, what we get, what we're going to use. And then it's very clear what we're doing here. And I think that's also a nice and very flexible way in Laravel to deal with those situations. Also, um, what I also talked about is that like in every controller, we have very easy access to the user that is binded to the route. Maybe let me show this as well. So we're using route model binding. So we have, we get a request to users and then we have an ID like one. And here level tries to get the user with the ID one. And then inside our controller, I directly have access to this user. We've been used to this for a long time. This is super useful. But in many other classes, that's not so easy anymore. But it is now way better, like here in this request, where I can just say, give me this from the route. And now I have access to the model binded to the route in this way as well, which I think is really beautiful. And again, take a look at the official docs, especially for the um, contextual attributes here, because there are a lot and very different ways in order you can use them, which can be quite helpful for your development. I hope you find them as useful as we do here at Laravel and please let me know if you have already used any of them in your application and which one you like the most. Since they are so powerful and clean to use, I'm pretty sure we will have some more in Laravel, but don't worry, 
I'll keep you updated as always. Have fun with PHP attributes in Laravel. Bye.